We start today with the lamest Hollywood party ever. Just a bunch of lame ass dudes and terrible turtlenecks in this gaudy living room with an extremely out of place, dirty ass couch. Brendan Fraser's little cousin enters the party with Gary Owens. Marlon takes that opportunity to try out for the rodeo. He manages to ride Brandon F's jock for just long enough for this to be considered harassment. Luckily, Gary Owens recognizes him as that black guy and Marlon does his best shuck and or jive. They're impressed enough they invite Marlon to the bathroom to do a Ouija board uh, and summon Bob Marley's spirit in smoke. Marlon, as a grown ass little brother, succumbs to the peer pressure of a solid, it's cool if you're not down, and basically hits one marijuana and becomes addicted for life. Sean Waynes walks up to this yellow bone and while trying to live Gucci Mane's dream, ends up cooking some BS up in his kitchen and strikes out. He then starts pitching some ideas with Steve Buscemi's son, and he hates every idea, but he's seen Marlon as that black guy. He has a great role for a young black actor. Sean Marlon's trying to hype up Marlon, talk about how great he is, and at that moment, Marlon walks in shrieking off that Reginald Bush. Marlon assures Sean that he didn't inhale, he just had the smoke in his mouth. Sean tells him that no way he can make a career off weed jokes, which has to be the worst age advice I've ever heard. Also, someone getting mad at a little bit of weed at a party when every other Hollywood party got people skiing in a bathroom is another indication that this is the lamest party ever. Marlon hops back on the Zealous celebrities Johnson and rides it into the moonlight. Marlon arrives home from publicly filleting a lame all night. Sean tells Marlon he got him an audition and the continuity on the soda pour was was noteworthy enough that I had to note it. Marlon is being unfunny, but keeps laughing at his own jokes. A lot of people that get stoned like to think they're funny, but they're just incoherent. He continues to insist that he was just fake smoking. Sean tells him that that's step one. Next, he'll be directing traffic with nothing but flip flops on. I think he's smoking on that synthetic weed, that K2 or Spice or whatever they call it. Marlon tells Sean to leave him alone because he isn't smoking weed, which is technically true at this exact second. Uh, tamale husk fall out of Marlon pocket and now Sean really has to lecture him now. Marlon tells him it's weed and you're acting like it's crack. Sean responds with multiple unfunny jokes. Marlon even says that doctors prescribe it to people. Sean tries telling Marlon that he can't hang out with a uh, Neil Patrick Harris homie and Marlon correctly states that he's a grown ass man and Sean can't tell him what he can and can't do. He's gonna go and flush the mid pack down the toilet. The next day Sean is gossiping about about his younger brother to his dad and a security guard. I'm not even gonna mention the fact they're Craig's parents from Friday. Dee goes and tries to stop and frisk Marlon. I feel like she should not be allowed to have a gun on her hip. Are newspaper stands in New York really that rough? Marlon is rightfully upset with Sean having all this business out in these streets and Sean lies and says he barely told anyone. Marlon is going for papers and Sean asks what papers. Marlon tells him he doesn't even use papers anymore since he heard Raw is getting sued for having heavy metals in them or something he saw on TikTok. Pop starts telling him a story about a surgeon he once knew who started messing with drugs and it gave him shaky hands. So he had to go work at Supercuts. Marlon's wondering what type of shit he was smoking on. Marlon wondering what type of shit he was smoking on. Sean tries to recreate the this is your brain on drugs commercial, but Pops ain't about to have him wasting food on some terrible bit that's not even gonna get no laughs. It's time for the audition. Marlon is practicing in the hallway and this is not gonna go well. Luckily, at that moment, little Bobby or whatever this dude's name was, comes up after leaving the audition for the remake of Starsky and Hutch, it looks like. He sees Marlon freaking out internally and externally and tells him to just do what you do to relax. Marlon tells him he left his booty magazines at home, which I don't, bro, ain't nobody ask you that whatsoever. He was trying to tell him to spark one up. Bob never works sober. He smokes 10 blunts before lunch. I know that sounds like that's too much. Working high makes you more creative. It frees your mind and you lose all inhibition. Marlon says that must be why Robert Downey Jr. stays employed. And once again, are we still talking about weed? Little Bobby Marley keeps a swisher filled with that one hitter quitter and graciously gives Marlon the one he keeps in his pocket. What a good friend. I get my answer to the question I asked like 10 seconds ago and Marlon is definitely on something more than weed. Clearly this man is wetter than Aquaman. Denzel's about to bust Bobby downstairs with some dust. Marlon starts off his audition by thanking L. Ron Hubbard. 
He's really trying to get into Hollywood. He then shows uh, Kevin Smith face his best tuck and roll. If this mental breakdown wasn't apparent enough, Marlon starts singing like he saw Dreamgirls last night. For his next trick, he attempts to transform to transcend the fourth wall by forming his body into the fractals that fill his field of view. I, was I as high as Marlon when I wrote that sentence? The director is a consummate professional and he even orders Marlon some water instead of calling security on this random inebriate that's higher than a giraffe center of gravity. The audition is still going on somehow and Marlon is kicking higher than I would think is possible in this size of jean. I'll give him that. He then starts scanning the carpets for any white powder and he must have inhaled carpet freshener because when the hell is this man on this scene goes on for way too long y'all should have kicked his ass out of this office a while ago he's truly at his jimmy got soul stage of his career because he starts getting butt ass for some reason. Before he leaves, he steals all these jelly beans. The director hates what drugs do to a good actor. First little Bobby, now Marlon. Marlon comes home fronting, acting like he killed the audition. Sean says he must've been doing the Rick James story. Marlon must be smoking on that chocolate lie because he tries denying that. Sean points out the giant jar of jelly beans and the fact he smells like Willie Nelson's beard. Please, Sean, leave the jokes to me. I would've at least said he smelled like Willie Nelson's guitar pick. Weed gives you a false sense of security. Then when you come off that high, you're worse off than when you smoked it. Like when they smoked the joint before writing the script. Sean then tells him that he's gonna turn into a bum like Little Bob. Little Bob lost his job in the sequel to Getting Stoned for Getting Stoned and that's how I know y'all don't really appreciate real method acting. Marlon didn't even like smoking. It made him feel stupid. There won't be a next time. He ain't smoking that stuff no more. After the show goes off the air, there's this pretty cheesy ass PSA. There's a lot of reason people mess with drugs. Stress, loneliness, anxiety, frustration. I'm not sure if this PSA was supposed to try to make drugs sound cool, but after hearing that, I mean, it sounds like a solid enough reason.